SQL is ranked as a number one data analyst skill to get a job. And if you don't know enough SQL, you won't become a data analyst because nearly every single job listing requires SQL. Therefore, it's pretty obvious that a substantial part of becoming a data analyst should be learning SQL. But there are ways to learn SQL as a beginner way faster and easier. And I suspect that I've found the best way to learn SQL. We're going to be reviewing the course SQL for Data Science. Now, over half a million people have enrolled in this course. It's been here a long time and it's definitely here to stay. And you can even take it for free. But I'm also going to compare it with some other options in the end that might work better for you. And you should definitely be aware of all the other options before you get started or you're going to waste a lot of time. So if you don't have five minutes for this now, you could be learning SQL the wrong way and waste hundreds of hours. That's just the truth. Now back to the course. This course is also part of a program. It is the first course in the program and it's called SQL for Data Science and only takes 14 hours to complete. It's for beginners and no prior SQL experience is required. But if you already know some SQL, that's completely fine. Every single one of us could always use some extra SQL practice. This course is a great opportunity to acquire a lot of the SQL skills to help become job ready quickly. Let's go over the formalities first or else you'll be really confused when we get to the pros and cons and the final comparison. Now this course is from the University of California Davis which is a university surprisingly located in California and established in 1905. A simple bachelor's degree at this university will cost you between 50 to 100 thousand dollars. This university has over 100 years of teaching experience and it's safe to say that it's not their first time teaching someone SQL. Now normally when you take a university course it's often pretty old and parts of it are already relevant and it's the complete opposite in most online courses. They're more relevant, they're more updated and especially useful in tech where things change all the time. Universities teaching new technology is kind of like when the US Congress questioned Mark Zuckerberg about online privacy and security but they barely understood the internet in the first place. Take a look and see for yourself. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Senator, no, I would probably not choose to do that publicly here. I think that may be what this is all about. But here, although the course is technically provided by a university, this is an updated online course about SQL, and SQL really hasn't changed much either. I mean, it first appeared in 1974, so it's been around nearly 50 years, so I think even the universities have had just enough time to adapt to it. You can enroll in this course for free and go through all the material, but you need a subscription to access the online test and get a final certificate. The subscription is pretty affordable if you compare it to the cost of college. I think it's around 49 bucks a month, depending on your location, of course, but I highly recommend checking out their financial aid system if you do need it. Now, the actual course content is mostly videos, and then you will have some exercises after each chunk of videos. The videos are pretty concise, which I like because watching long videos is an incredibly bad way to learn. That's why my videos are short, because nobody wants to listen for 50 minutes or something. When you finish watching long lectures, most people have already forgotten what was said. A great course gives you a bit of knowledge and then gives you the opportunity to apply what you've learned. And that's what I think is so great about this course. Let's take a deeper look into the course material and what you're going to learn. So it comes with four different modules. First is basically a light introduction to SQL. Next, we have a section called filtering, sorting, and calculating data with SQL. And what that means is using things like where, order by, and so on to select specific parts of your data. These basics are incredibly important. You need to know them like you know how to spell, which I hope you do, but sometimes I do misspell way too much. Module three is going a little bit deeper into things called subqueries and joins. Joins are used to connect data together, like for example, two rows that we want to connect together. The last module is about analyzing data, which I think is great. As a data analyst, the end goal is to analyze data and find out some cool stuff that we can use to make data-driven decisions. As a summary, the first course is incredibly short but puts together all the basics really nicely. But the question is, do you need to complete the entire four-course program? I think there's a strong reason for you to do this if you're looking to become a data analyst, because like I said, SQL is the most in-demand skill for a data analyst, so it's probably worth it. But is this enough SQL to get a job? Let's take a look. So the entire specialization program consists of four different courses, but the final one is just a capstone project with SQL, which is great for your portfolio, but it's not really a normal course that you have to go through. Course two is about data wrangling. You'll learn how to validate and clean a data set using SQL, which is a key skill. You will also learn how to start from a business question and figure out how to solve it using data and specifically with SQL. A large part of the course is focused on answering data questions because it's so important. Learning SQL while answering data questions will help you build your skills that directly apply to a real data analyst job. And sometimes the data is missing, you don't know what the question is, so you need to figure it out, and so on. And you have to get used to different types of situations, which this course helps you do. In the final course before the project, it's a little bit about Spark and more advanced SQL things. As a data analyst, Spark is good to know, but I recommend starting out with SQL and not worrying too much about this as a beginner. Get the basics down first and then continue from there. This is the moment you've been waiting for, or I hope so. Yeah? Please. 
tell me. Well, now we're here anyway, so we might as well do it. Let's compare it to the other options. Some popular ways of learning SQL are We Three Schools and SQL Practice. They're two really popular websites and really good free resources to use. Now, I still think this course is better, and it's because of the format. It's like a real course, and you get a certificate at the end, and it's going to keep you motivated. It's easy to get lost and unmotivated when you're on a site learning SQL, but here you're in a real course format with small achievements that will keep you motivated. I think it's a great course, and I would definitely recommend it. Now, before you start, listen up, because this is very important. I recommend you to complete the first course before deciding if you want to go on with the entire specialization. The reason is because I don't know if you're going to enjoy this learning style. Perhaps you prefer something else, and I'll make a video about other options too. I put the link in the description, but you're not done. SQL is not enough to become a data analyst. So check out this video where I show you how to put together the other pieces and truly become a data analyst.